This is gonna be good. Is Jack Daniels bourbon? Or better yet, does Jack Daniels qualify to be bourbon? With so much whiskey education out there, blogs, magazines, YouTube, distillery tours, it's like this question and the answer has gotten even more cloudy. I don't get it. Now, very recently, I've heard some pretty outlandish reasons why folks think Jack isn't or can't be a bourbon, why it is a bourbon, and everything else in between. Well, today we're gonna dive in step-by-step step through every part of the laws of bourbon and Tennessee whiskey to give you the definitive answer that cannot be argued. I don't care what anybody says. Let's get crazy. Let's end the debate today on the Mass and Drum. Welcome back to the Master and Drum Whiskey Room. I'm Jason C. Uh, like, subscribe, do all the things you need to do to help grow the channel. Appreciate the support. There's always a lot of debate about whether one of the best-selling whiskeys in the world, Jack Daniels Tennessee Whiskey, can qualify as a bourbon. To help answer this question, I'm going to go through a factual list with logic-based details on what the true answer is. Part of the confusion, I think, stems from how Tennessee whiskey has different, yet not so different rules from bourbon, and also how Jack Daniels chooses to classify itself as a Tennessee whiskey rather than bourbon. As you know, all bourbon is whiskey, but not all whiskey is bourbon. But let's start with the rules that govern bourbon and Tennessee whiskey, and you can see for yourself how similar they are. First is where the whiskey is made. As you know, bourbon can only be made in the United States. Jack Daniels is classified as a Tennessee whiskey. Now, last time I checked, Tennessee is in the United States, right? So that means it doesn't exclude Jack Daniels from being able to fall under a bourbon classification. Next. Next, we go to Mashville, the beautiful recipe that makes up all the glorious whiskeys we love to drink every single day. Now, by law, Tennessee whiskey must contain at least 51% corn in the Mashville. Bourbon, by law, also must be at least 51% corn. Oh, look, another similarity. Next is the distillation proof, and this is where I've heard a few crazy things from different people about what, what makes Tennessee whiskey Tennessee whiskey. But here's the deal. Tennessee whiskey, by law, must be distilled no higher than 160 proof. Well, guess what? Bourbon, by law, no higher than 160 proof as well. No difference. All right, next up is maximum barrel entry proof. And this is another, another subject where I think folks get things mixed up. This is when that beautiful white dog, that beautiful distillate that comes off the still goes into the barrel. By law, Tennessee whiskey cannot exceed 125 proof going into the barrel. You could go lower if you wanna proof it down to 115, 110, you could do that. But you cannot exceed 125. You know what else can exceed 125 proof going into the barrel? Bourbon. Bourbon, by law, cannot exceed 125 proof. If a Tennessee whiskey or a bourbon is over 125 proof in the bottle, that is a result of aging in the barrel over time. All right, so now we know what proof we're going into the barrel. We can't exceed 125, but let's talk about the barrel itself. By law, Tennessee whiskey must be aged in a brand new charred oak barrel or container. Bourbon, by law, is the same must be aged in a brand new charred oak barrel or container again we're seeing the same rules by law you guys you guys seeing this all right let's talk minimum abv all that beautiful whiskey in the barrel has been aged up say six seven eight years and it's time to bottle it now for both laws that whiskey cannot go in the bottle any lower than 80 proof that's 40 percent abv so if you look at regular Jack Daniels, uh, Jack Daniels old number seven recipe, you'll see that at 80 proof. You could see this one, uh, this pick that I said was 129.9 proof, but it can never go lower. Again, bourbon and Tennessee whiskey, the same. All right, now we get to the part that's divisive, but it really shouldn't be. It's the Lincoln County process. The process of filtering that white dog through maple charcoal prior to aging so it can be called a Tennessee whiskey, which was signed into law on May 13th, 2013. 
So by law, Tennessee whiskey must be charcoal filtered before barreling, with one Tennessee exception, which we'll get into. Bourbon, on the other hand, does not have any laws requiring to use or not to use the charcoal filtering at any point in the process. That's really the major difference. Now, historically, big bourbon producers like Heaven Hill have utilized the charcoal mellowing process before, before and after barreling. It doesn't really look like it matters. The big argument that folks say to dismiss Tennessee whiskey being also classified as a bourbon is the Lincoln County process and the flavor it adds to the whiskey. Well, that's dead wrong. All right, I want you to zoom in for this. Ready? Here we go. Charcoal filtering or mellowing is subtractive, not additive when you talk about flavor. You know, rewind that, run that back. Charcoal filtering or mellowing is subtractive, not additive when you talk about flavor. The reason you charcoal filter is to smooth out the rough edges of a whiskey. It gets rid of those, you know, harsher notes that you might get. It essentially pre-smooths out the whiskey before it goes into the barrel. Now a charred barrel has its own charcoal that smooths a whiskey over the course of time while it sits in the barrel, along with getting all those sweet flavors that we all know and love. The Lincoln County process basically does kind of a double smoothing out the rough edges method before it goes into the barrel. Again, subtractive, not additive. All right, let's go back to bourbon to further my case. Even though it's not law, bourbon producers historically have used charcoal mellowing before and presently, like I mentioned. Remember this beautiful bottle? This uh, bottle and bond, six-year-old Heaven Hill that was, geez, I think at the time, 17 bucks before they changed it? Well, right here on the side, in big bold lettering, what does it say? Charcoal filtered. It's right there, can't argue it. I know what you're gonna say, oh, Jason, that's an old bottle, it's discontinued. All right, I got something else for you. Ezra Brooks, cast strength. These are store picks from Lux Road Distilling. And if you look really close in the front of that bottle, right here on the bottom, charcoal mellowed, just like Jack Daniels. All right, back to Tennessee whiskey. There are plenty of brands in Tennessee that choose to use the Lincoln County process or not, or even have different methodologies of using the Lincoln County process. If you look at brands like Chattanooga Whiskey Company or Old Dominic's, they aren't using the Lincoln County process, but they also aren't saying, you know, Tennessee whiskey. They're saying it's a bourbon whiskey from Tennessee. The only whiskey with a Tennessee whiskey distinction on the label that does not use the Lincoln County process, as far as I know, is a brand named Pritchard's. I know they use white corn instead of yellow corn. Not really sure if that plays into it. Not sure how they get around the laws for a Tennessee whiskey distinction not using the Lincoln County process. I'll have to take a deeper dive into that. Now, of course, we have to talk about George Dickel Tennessee whiskey, everybody's favorite. No, God, please, no, no! One of the most sourced whiskeys used for blenders in whiskey today. Talk about Bardstown Bourbon Company, Heaven's Door, Costco, Barrel Craft Spirits, and many others, all using George Dickel Tennessee whiskey for blends. Now, when those blends are finished and the labels are made, Guess what? It's still called bourbon on the label. George Dickel even has an eight-year-old charcoal chill-filtered bourbon that they sell. Look, charcoal chill-filtered, bourbon, whiskey. All right, that was a lot of information, so let's do a, a kind of a different final breakdown, if you will. First, we know that Tennessee whiskey and bourbon follow the same rules when it comes to many different categories. Match build, distillation proof, maximum barrel entry proof, type of barrel used for aging, and minimum bottling ABV. We also know that bourbon can choose to be charcoal filtered or not. There is no distinction like Tennessee whiskey, which must be charcoal filtered, or in particular, Jack Daniels. All right, so what's the real difference? It's the big M word, marketing. So a little quick history. Jack Daniels Distillery was established in 1866 and was the first registered distillery in the United States. Jasper Newton Daniel, under the tutelage of Nearest Green, were the men behind the old number seven taste that is so popular today. In 1866, Jack Daniels first bottled his Tennessee whiskey in jugs with cork stoppers. Now to distinguish his whiskey from others, he began stenciling his name on the jugs, which became the first form of, when you look at it, it was the first form of distillery marketing and advertising. By the late 1870s, glass bottles were the common way to store whiskeys, and in 1887, the words Old Number 7 finally appeared as the Jack Daniels product name. While the words Lynchburg, Tennessee was on the bottles where the whiskey was made, the words Tennessee whiskey didn't start appearing on the labels until the early 1900s. Fast forward to May 13, 2013, that's when the state of Tennessee declared that to be called a Tennessee whiskey, you must use the Lincoln County process. So why do it? What's the reason? Why would you want to call it Tennessee whiskey? 
Well, historians and Jack Daniels purists, I think, would tell you that they wanted to protect the history and the legacy of Jack Daniels being such an important part of the history of the state of Tennessee. The Lincoln County process helps distinguish their history from other products like bourbon. On the Brown Foreman side, they can protect that story and also have a unique, distinct product, unlike bourbon. Now, with Jack Daniels also being the most or second most selling whiskey in the world each and every year, I agree with their marketing and being a Tennessee whiskey through and through. However, historically, comparatively, Jack Daniels does qualify to be called a bourbon if it wanted to. And if you don't believe me, listen to Chris Fletcher, current master distiller at Jack Daniels talk about it. Yeah, well, I think, you know, the big thing is um, charcoal mellowing does not prevent us from being labeled as a bourbon. We were almost forced to be labeled as bourbon in the 1940s by the federal government. And, you know, that's the way we choose to label and market our whiskey. Um, but Tennessee whiskey is bourbon whiskey by definition. So mm -hmm. it, our whiskey does qualify as bourbon whiskey. Can we play that again in case someone didn't hear it? Thanks. And, you know, that's the way we choose to label and market our whiskey. Um, but Tennessee whiskey is bourbon whiskey by definition. So mm -hmm. it, our whiskey does qualify as bourbon whiskey. There you have it. Jack Daniels does meet the qualifications to be deemed a bourbon whiskey. However, it chooses to be a Tennessee whiskey with good reason. Now, if after this video, you still choose to refute that fact or not believe it, you either were paying attention to this video or you're just being stubborn. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, hope you enjoyed this video as we found out whether or not Jack Daniels Tennessee whiskey can qualify as a bourbon. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit that subscribe button below. Please hit that like button. If you haven't yet, find me on Instagram, find me on Twitter. Let me know down in the comments what you think. Are you still non-believers? Did I, did, I, did I change your mind? Or are you all in now? Now you can go out to your friends who still are non-believers and explain to them factually why it can be deemed a bourbon. Until next time, as I always say, it's not about the whiskey, it's the people you share with. Cheers. I'm going to drink this beautiful bourbon. I mean Tennessee whiskey. Take care.